So in case you haven't heard, there's some human malware going around. And by the way, hat tip to Gamers Nexus for coining that term because I think it's just fantastic. But yeah, human malware is going around. So we have had some market adjustments to different components in the PC space. Uh, whether it's because they're actually warranted or not, that's above my pay grade. But what I do want to talk about today is how you can still maximize your dollars to get the best gaming PC possible while utilizing the new and the used market. Because we've heard a lot over the past about week, week and a half or two weeks from different tech tubers about whether it is right to buy now, wait, or what scenarios really justify you purchasing a PC now in hopes that you get things before the stock dries up and we end up with inflated pricing. So putting all that aside, I'm not gonna really be talking about whether you should be buying or not right now, but I am gonna talk about how you can get the best gaming PC possible using a, a budget that is probably a fixed one. Let's face it, you probably set aside a certain amount of money for your PC. And I wanna go over how you can make that money, that, that nice cash pile, turn into a fantastic gaming PC, even in a market that is getting tougher by the day. So right off the bat, you're gonna be seeing some B-roll of a PC that I recently, like very recently, like this past weekend, put together. And that's gonna be sort of my reference point for this video because there's a lot going on with this PC, but it also does a good job of illustrating new and used components and sort of showing you where you should be saving some money and where you should be uh, really spending a little bit of extra money just to make sure that you get quality components. And I wanna talk about all those. So when I'm building a computer, I often break it down into different groups of parts. So the platform group to me is the motherboard, RAM, and CPU because often if you're changing out CPUs, you have to switch up motherboards, and sometimes depending on the generation of things, you also then tie RAM into that. So I kind of group those three components together. Now the good news here is that there are a lot of good deals still available on the used markets for things like RAM and even motherboards if you're willing to look around a little bit. And if you're utilizing sites like eBay, then your buyer protection is gonna keep you safe from any motherboard that's just not gonna work whatsoever. So I would absolutely recommend if you are in the market for a PC right now, RAM and motherboards are a really nice place where you can save some money by going used. Now, CPUs are a little bit of a mixed bag in this regard. If you're going to Intel, you can often find some deals on CPUs, especially the older the generations are. So if you're really trying to put together a really budget system and you're looking at like third, fourth, or sixth gen uh, i5s or i7s, especially those fourth and third gen ones, you can find some really good value there. Sixth gen Gen, eh, maybe, maybe not. Now on the AMD side, their current new pricing is actually really, really solid. And I would actually recommend that you just go the new route if you're putting together an AMD system for the CPU. And that's mostly because at the very budget end, you have the Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant, which sometimes is in and out of stock. But if it's in stock, and I'll link it down below just so you can check it on Amazon to see if it's there. But basically, if you're looking at a budget system and the 1600 AF is in stock, then probably just go with that because you're getting a brand new CPU with a CPU cooler that'll do a good enough job to not have to replace it, at least in the immediate future. And it's gonna give you really solid gaming performance. And with six cores and 12 threads, you won't really need to replace it for a good little while. Now, the second group of parts is sort of the auxiliary parts that you could upgrade independently from pretty much everything else. And I'm gonna separate off the GPU from that group, even though absolutely for the most part, you can can kind of upgrade a GPU when you want. But what I wanna talk briefly about is the case, power supply, and storage. Now I'm gonna start with the case, and this is a really simple one. For the most part, the best value out there is just going the brand new route because you're gonna get all of the different accessories you need to make that case work. And we're talking things like standoff screws, zip ties, all those things that you're gonna need to get your PC put together is gonna come in the box. Now, occasionally you do find a really good deal. Usually it's a local deal like Facebook market 
marketplace that does feature a case that's a great value in which case go ahead and just grab that but if you're looking at places like eBay that typically send out your unit whatever you buy uh, shipping is going to drive up the cost for cases and because they're generally a bigger item it's it's about as cheap just to go brand new and there are a lot of really nice budget cases and in fact I'll link the matrix 30 down below because it's a great one that I've used several times and I'll also link the one from the build that you saw the b-roll of and that you are seeing the b-roll of because even though that case doesn't have the greatest airflow if you add a couple of fans to the front, then you are gonna be in pretty good shape for most components that aren't really, really hot. And then storage and power supply are sort of along the same lines of, I would recommend going the new route though. This is one of those do as I say, not as I do type of situations because obviously the power supply in this build I've been showing you is a used unit. That actually comes down more to the budget that I was under and it was a very strict budget. So I just kind of had to find a power supply that was cheap that would really get the build up and running but as a general rule of thumb if you don't know where your power supply is coming from and you don't know what kind of condition it's in it's better off to just spend a little bit of extra money and make sure that you get a solid unit that's going to last you for several years evga has a lot of really nice uh, power supplies for about 40 dollars, as well as i believe thermal take has a 430 watt one that sort of fluctuates between 35 45 something like that but uh there, there are some good power supplies out there you're just going to have to spend about $40 to get a good starter one, but it should get you up and running and be in good shape for several years. Now storage is a bit of a mixed bag because brand new hard drives can be a little bit expensive, but at the same time, old and used ones, uh, they can be pretty slow and pretty bad and pretty loud and just all around not a great experience. So your mileage is gonna vary, but if you do decide to go the non-new route, the refurbished route, even on Amazon, is a really good sort of middle ground because you're getting these recertified units often from the manufacturers themselves, except that they are often much cheaper cheaper than a brand new hard drive. If you're looking at SSDs, I view those as a little bit safer to go on the used route. But again, just like any storage medium, you don't want to get an ancient SSD that has been run through its cycles over and over that may even be on its way out and dying. So if you're getting an SSD, you know, try to hunt for those sort of more recent models. But for the most part, because SSDs don't have moving parts, as long as it wasn't abused in some sort of weird way, then it should be good to go. And that sort of brings us to the last component and that is the graphics card and in this regard if you're building any kind of mid-tier or lower uh, budget build then I would almost recommend 100% of the time going for the used route because used GPUs are just so much cheaper than their brand new counterparts often to the point where you can actually get a couple of used GPUs for the price of one brand new one so if you have a GPU for a year or two and it goes out then you just grab another used GPU slap it in your system and you're good to go. But if you're looking at building a PC for a budget of about $500 or cheaper, I really would suggest that you go for the used route because you're gonna get a better gaming experience unless, of course, you absolutely need that warranty, in which case, I guess, the new route is good. Or the middle ground here would be if you check out EVGA's B-Stock website, often they do have uh, new-ish GPUs, whether it's because they were returned and they've reboxed them or maybe there was a simple fix that EVGA had to do, their refurbished, whatever the case is. Those B-Stock GPUs are often significantly cheaper than a brand new one, but then they also come with EVGA's warranty. So if you are into warranties and you really just want to have that peace of mind, then maybe EVGA B-Stock or other recertified or refurbished units are the way to go but it's one of those things you can get way better performance for the price by going with the used market this particular system I've been showing off has an RX 580 8 gigabyte card I picked it up for $110 shipped to my door that's a way better value uh, that you're gonna find from virtually anything on the market and certainly anything on the market brand it was a really good value overall like I was just really happy with that purchase. Now going back to the build that I've sort of been just showing you bits and pieces of, I wanna give you the specs of it and give you a price for it. So it features a Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant, have a one terabyte hard drive in it, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. We have an RX 580 eight gigabyte card. It's a brand new case, does have a used power supply in it, but this thing is a boss at 1080p gaming. And I put it together for just barely over 400 
$400. I actually think it was about 420, 425, something like that. But it was a very budget friendly build that's getting great performance. And I would challenge you to head over to PC Part Picker and spec something out there that is comparable to the PC that I've been showing off. And what I think you're gonna find there is you're gonna end up with a much higher price tag than the 425-ish dollar price tag that we have with this system I've been showing off. And this is a sneak peek for a series that's coming down the road. But basically, yeah, if you use the brand new and the used markets together, you're gonna get the best experience possible where some components are brand new are still fantastic values. And other times the used market just presents way better price to performance and you really shouldn't lock yourself into just using the brand new or just the used market blend the two together that's how you get the best prices with the best performance so i've been rambling on enough but i do want to hear from you guys what components do you enjoy buying used versus new kind of give us a list down below maybe even of some specific components that you've gotten on the used market for really great values just so people can kind of see what's out there and what might be available to them leave those thoughts and comments down below and of course if you like the video hey give it a like share subscribe comment all those things are very helpful for the channel you can follow me both on instagram and on twitter at hoosier hardware and as always i'll let youtube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch i'm shane with hoosier hardware and i'll see you guys in the next video